Okay, we've got the north and south pole of the magnet here, and we've got a wire that's going in between and a circuit. There's going to be a magnetic field going from the north to the south pole like so. And when we close the circuit, there's going to be a current flowing through it. This is going to cause a force on the wire that's going to push it upwards like so. This is known as the motor effect. Okay, so why is there a force? So first we've got a magnetic field around the magnet. It doesn't have to be a permanent magnet. It could be, for example, an electromagnet as well. Then we've got the wire here, and we're actually looking at the cross-section of the wire, and let's pretend the current is coming towards us. So we're looking at into the wire, basically. This is going to produce a magnetic field around it. So whenever you have a current going through a wire, there's going to be a magnetic field around it. If we put that wire into the magnetic field that's already there, then they're going to add up. Okay, they're going to add, add up like vectors. So the top, where they were going in opposite direction, they subtract, and the, the field gets weaker. At the bottom, it's getting adding up together because they're both in the same direction, making it stronger. This interaction causes a force on the wire. So we can use Fleming's left hand rule to figure out the direction of the force. You get your left hand like so, and you set it up so that the first finger and the second finger and the thumb are at right angles to each other. Your first finger points in the direction of the field, get okay, F for field, and that's basically from north to south. Your second finger, there's a C in it, so we can think that's the direction of the current, conventional current. So that's from positive to negative. And finally, your thumb points in the direction that the wire would uh, move in. It's, it's in the direction of the motion of the wire, or in other words, it's the direction of the force that the wire feels. Okay, let's practice using Fleming's left hand rule. I'm going to figure out the direction of the force in this scenario here. So we've got the field going from north to south, so it's pointing upwards, and the current is going towards the right. So we point our left hand like this. So you can see a thumb is pointing towards you, okay, towards out of the screen. So we say the force is out to the page. In the second example, I've reversed the direction of the current. So the current is going towards the left now. Field is still going from north to south, and the current is now going towards the left. So first finger up, second finger towards the left. Okay, that means the thumb is pointing into the page. So that means the force is into the page, like so. Your third example here, so the field is pointing towards the right. So point your first finger towards the right. And make sure you lock your first finger in towards the right. So you might want to use your other hand to make sure that the first finger doesn't move as you realign the second finger. Okay, so the second finger needs to be pointing upwards. And so the force is into the page. So the force, yeah, into the page, like so. The fourth example, so going from north to south is the first finger, so coming towards you basically. Current is going towards the left, so if we align our hands, it should look like this. First finger towards you, second finger towards the left, thumb upwards, so the force is upwards. Fifth example, determine the direction of the force, so feel going from north to south, so towards the right, current into the page. Okay, and so your uh, thumb is pointing downwards, so that means the force is downwards. Now, if you find that you're struggling or if, if you're in a bit of pain, that means you'll have to rotate your hand around completely, do a 360, and it becomes easier. Now, what about in this example? The current is towards the right, the field is also towards the right. So basically, they're parallel to each other. So in this case, it turns out the force on the wire is actually zero. So when the current and the field are parallel or even anti-parallel, that means going in uh, opposite direction but along the same line, then there's no force on the wire. The force on the wire is maximum when they're perpendicular, the field and the current are perpendicular to each other. But if it's in between, then only the component that's perpendicular experiences a force. Um, so the force won't be as large. And if they're parallel, then there's no force at all. In this example, I removed the field line, so you have to figure it out yourself. So the field line goes from north to south like so. The current is going downwards. So if we point our first finger towards the left in the direction of the field, second finger downwards, the thumb is pointing to the page. That means the force is into the page. Okay, in this example, we need to figure out the direction of the field that goes from north to south like so. We also need to figure out the direction of the current that goes from the positive end, which is the longer bar of terminal there uh, and it goes around towards the negative one so it's going this way uh, anti-clockwise in this case so if we have our first finger pointing downwards and the second finger pointing towards the left if the part thumb is pointing towards us so that means the force is out of the page towards us okay, again we need to draw the dash the fields it goes from north to south like so towards us basically the current is going from positive to negative so it's going towards the left 
uh, in the wire that's uh, in the section of the wire that's in between the fields. So if we point our first finger towards you, towards out of the page, and the second finger towards the left, we get a force pointing upwards. Okay. This example over here, we need to figure out the direction of the current. So we've got the direction of the force. So the field is going from north to south. So let's draw that on. So this, the first finger is going to point towards the right. The thumb needs to point upwards because the force is upwards. Okay, it's like so. And you can see our second finger, which represents the current, is pointing towards us. So that means the current is going from B to A. So that means that the current is, the uh, B is positive and that the A is negative. In this example, we need to determine the polarity of the magnet. So is A or B uh, the North Pole? Okay, so firstly, the direction of the current that's going from positive to negative, so that's going towards the right, like so. The force is upwards, that means our thumb is going to point upwards. So the second finger is the current that's pointing towards the right. And if we do that, we get our first finger pointing into the page, basically from A to B. So that means A is positive, um, sorry, A is the North Pole, and B is the South Pole. The final example here, we've got an AC supply. That means the current is constantly changed direction. It's going to be going left and right. So let's start with the field. So the field is pointing from north to south. So the current is going to go towards the left first. Let's imagine it's going towards the left. So in this case, we've uh, used Fleming's left hand rule. First finger towards us, second finger towards the left. We get a thumb pointing upwards. But then, the, so the force will be upwards. Uh, but then the direction of the current would change. It's going to start going towards the right. That's what an alternating current is. It's constantly changing direction. So now we'd keep our first finger pointing towards us because the field hasn't changed direction. And we point our second finger towards the right now, like so. And as you can see, the thumb is now pointing downwards. So I mean, the force is downwards. So the force is going to be constantly changing, going from up to down, up to down, and so on. So that means the wire actually that's in between the magnet there is going to oscillate. And in fact, um, it's going to oscillate up and down, and you can actually get a standing wave formed between the magnets.